Are you recording? Yes. Hello. Brian's doing it. What the hell is currently going on? Why? What is in my face? <laughs> a microphone. What's your name, sir? Uh, hi. Uh, <laughs> what the f is going on? <laughs> What's your role here? Who are you, sir? <laughs> Why are you recording it? Why are you recording it? This is good. Yeah. Why are you recording it? Because See, Devin said it wasn't going to be loud up here, but it literally is. It's not loud. It's fine. You've got the mic. You have. What you got to do to Brian? Brian obviously doesn't want to be in this right now. Right, so right now it's only picking up you, Julia. Yeah, Lucas, I know. I'm saying Brian doesn't want this to be in this right now. This that I want Brian right now is absolutely perfect. 2.47 a.m. Thursday, March 9th. You know, why is there a person here working on something at 2.47 in the morning? That's what we want to know. Julia, come, come, come interview Brian. Interview <laughs> about what? He, I'm about working at a movie theater. What is he doing right now? Let the man talk. <laughs> Currently, I'm rebooting a projector because it happened my arm. I so don't want to get up in his business. It's so, right. He's doing an interview. So I'm trying to. And eh, system's okay. Wait, hold on. He's he's waiting for it to load. I am waiting for it to load. Oh, you want to like, oh, talk wait. us through what you're like, trying, trying to, to figure out? On the Why? projector at 3 a.m. in the morning on Thursday. Why it had an alarm? Why it wasn't connected to the internet? Yeah. My name is Devin, and I have worked here for almost four years. When I first started, I was a cast member, specifically a concessionist. I was the person who popped the popcorn, put it in the bag, and sent it on its way. The other uh, cast member positions are running and usher. There's the people who deliver the food to your seats, like a waiter, and then the ushers are the people who uh, greet you on the way out. And then they go in with brooms and they clean up the theater, sweep up all the popcorn after each show. Uh, the other positions we have here are uh, cooks and bartenders. I actually hold the record in this establishment for having the most job titles of any person. I was a cast member. Then I became a supervisor, which is a position that no longer exists. When they got rid of the supervisor position, I was then brought down to a bartender. When we no longer needed bartenders because COVID was over and we could hire more people, I became a trainer. And then I went from a trainer to my position now, which is a service manager. This is popper number one. The very first thing any employee who comes back here learns about it is do not move popper ever. If you look up here, we got a big hose that's pointing right into the popper. This will shoot out fire extinguisher foam if it detects a fire or if you pull on the fire alarm. This hose goes through the machine to the back, comes out down here on the side where you see this metal pipe, which goes down and then up through the ceiling, which is where the ansel is stored. So if you pull this and that metal pipe snaps, it's going to set off the fire alarm and shoot foam everywhere. So number one rule, do not move popper ever. Number two rule is that this is hot, don't do this. Hello and welcome to the manager's office. This is where all the wild, wacky fun happens, isn't that right? Manager assistant Julia? <laughs> yeah, of course. What are you doing right now? Making the schedule? Yeah. Deciding when the movies are playing, putting up tickets so that people can buy them. It's a wonderful, wonderful world that we have in here. We have a coffee maker that we don't use because I don't drink coffee. The entire movie theater industry was basically decimated because of COVID. We shut down for, I believe, four months, and then we reopened for a couple months with very limited staff. We had seven cast members. If you include um, management and kitchen and our cleaners, there's a couple more, but we had seven people whose jobs it was to take orders, make the popcorn, deliver the popcorn, and clean the theaters. Um, I was one of those seven. I was a bartender at the time. Back then, um, there could be days when there was one bartender, one person who made all the food and delivered it, and then one person who cleaned the theaters. But some days, we didn't even have the person who made the food and delivered it. So I'd have to take the order at the bar, walk to the back, make the popcorn, scoop it into a bag, 
and then deliver it to someone's chair. To be fair, back in those days, we were getting at most seven customers a day in the middle of COVID. So that was fantastic. Then uh, we closed down for another two or three months, finally reopened, went on a hiring spree, tried to get a lot more customers in here. Um, but we were still limited in the amount of people we could have each theater. The capacity was severely limited by the government. Um, and that actually, on top of just the attitude people had about going out in public at the time, really hurt our attendance and really hurt the bottom line. I know over the last couple months that um, AMC declared bankruptcy and Regal Cinemas have been closing down a lot of their locations. Uh, we closed down a couple of ours, but it wasn't necessarily related to COVID. It's just that everywhere is getting more expensive to operate any sort of business out of. And this location is thankfully in a very nice spot. We're in the center of a lot of different townships. And so people like coming here for movies. It's also not harmful that we have one of the actual best staffs in the entire company. Week after week, we get different surveys back from all the guests who come here and we are consistently scoring one of the highest locations. You might think that this door is locked and securely fastened so that, that all the customers in the building cannot go up here and touch our million dollar equipment, but you'd be wrong. You can literally just push it right open. This projector leads to theater one. That is our biggest auditorium. This is our workbench. It is a complete disaster right now. And I say right now, but what I really mean is literally all of the time. One of the things we're actually currently doing is trying to fix our captive view devices. This is what we give to deaf guests who cannot hear the movie. If you turn it on, what you should see are captions, but it doesn't work. So we're switching out the battery. Is that something that we have to do? It's part of our job description. Over there is actually over there is actually an old bathroom. There used to be a toilet and a shower in there for projectionists who, back in the day, had to physically put film reels together and stay up here all day to start and stop all the movies that were playing. So there was a toilet in there back in the old days. This is the hallway that goes above the longer hallway downstairs. We have theater seven, theater eight, and it goes all the way to 13. The only thing of note up here besides a half a dozen projectors is our server. This is called our LMS. It has over 10,000 gigabytes of data on it. Movies are usually about 200, but bigger films like Avatar, which are both three hours long and in 3D, can run up to 300 or 400 gigabytes. All these wires are what let the projectors communicate with our server here. And it actually gets its data beamed to it from a satellite that's on the roof. Sometimes companies will send us what we call these egg cartons that have physical hard drives in them and you take them and you plug them right into this slot like a VHS. So this one actually currently has one in it and we have two other slots. So whenever we get older movies, like today we showed The Big Lebowski, that's how that data was transferred to us on a physical hard drive that they sent to us in the mail. The rest of our telecommunication stuff is all of these wires and boxes. And not only do I not know what they are, but I'm also rather frightened of touching them. One of the most important, one of the most important people who work here and puts a smile on my face every day is our good friend, Michael Myers. I'm gonna channel my inner high school teacher here, Paul for my years doing that, and explain to you what is on this whiteboard. As you can see, we got some numbers up here and we got some words. Those are the key things, numbers and words. First one is admits. So that's the number of tickets we sold in a day. Top line is projected admits. So on Friday, we were supposed to do 557 people and we actually ended up doing 623. Today, for example, on Wednesday, we were supposed to do 109. We ended up doing 186. As you can see, our projected numbers are usually off on a factor of like 100. Sometimes we do double the amount that we're supposed to do. When corporate gives us these numbers, they also give us the number for our projected labor hours. Basically, this is the amount of time we're allowed to spend per day. So if we had uh, 20 employees and we had 150 hours, then we used, I'm bad at math. You can keep that in. So we're allotted 150 hours, we used 151. 
and that was supposed to be for the 550 people that we had, but we actually had 623, so as you can see, we were slightly short-staffed. The only really important numbers on here are that one and that one. This is the per cap. This is the amount of money we made per ticket sold. So for every ticket that was sold, not every uh, transaction, every ticket that was sold, we did about $12.84. Sometimes people come in as a group, they buy four tickets, five tickets, and then they get one large popcorn. That's going to really hurt our per cap, because that's one single popcorn for four guests. Whereas if four individual people come in and each order a large popcorn, that is much better for us. So we're actually incentivized to have smaller groups of people come in and, of course, order as much as they can. Uh, the big thing that helps our per cap is our sale of alcohol. So uh, movies that generally sell more alcohol, like rated R horror movies and rated G kids movies. Those are the best alcohol sellers. Those are really going to help with per cap. This number here is just our overall gross income for the day. And what we do is we take this and divide it by the amount of labor hours, and we get our sales per labor hour. This is the real big number that corporate cares about. This means that for every hour that we paid an employee to be here, so you can subtract minimum wage from that. You can multiply them together and get how much we spent to have the employees here. But for every hour an employee was here, we made $52. And uh, yeah, that's really the main measure of our success, the money we made per ticket and the money we made per hour of an employee being here. Welcome to my <laughs> <laughs> Oh, welcome to the lodge. Are you talking behind the camera or is someone else? This is where all the cool kids hang who work at Sinopolis. Everyone in this room works at the movie theater. This is Lauren. That's very close to being accurate. This is Devin. My name is Felix. This is Jason. <laughs> Jason smiled. This is Julia. <laughs> this is Izzy. And this is Ryan. And we're going to go through them, and everyone's going to say what you guys do at Sinopolis. Brandon, what do you do, sir? Uh, I'm a runner. A runner, okay. And you, ma'am? I'm a concessionist. A concessionist, very right, nice. And you, sir? I count the drawers, coin by coin, one by one. I take half an hour, and I talk about stocks to all the bartenders while I'm sitting in the office, and I make the other ones clean the bar while I'm talking to them about literally nothing, and sometimes... I'll go and follow the TPCs into their theaters, and I'll take my finger, and I'll wipe it on something and be like, hey, this is a little dusty. And can we see your title, your, 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 your uh, ID? My title is Grand Felix. No, just, just would you mind just, yeah, well, Oh my god, don't, don't, I've been in the film industry one hour and I'm being harassed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, what do you see? Show, don't be camera shy. <laughs> Are you shy? Oh my God. Can we please see? This is harassment. I'm calling right, our. At least, at least tell us your title then. I think Lucas is related to Heather. Felix the Cat. Excuse me? We're going to skip Jason for a second. What's your name? Julia Jason. Anderson. And what do you do at Sinopolis? I'm the manager's assistant. Manager's assistant. Well, yeah. What does that uh, entail? I assist the manager. She rings up break food. Yeah. I ring up break food. Gets yelled at for making the get schedule. Yelled at for the schedule. Okay, yeah, yeah. And get asked to go home early. You, sir, what do you do at Sinopolis? Yeah. I respect Dan. <laughs> good answer, good answer. Okay, back over here, Izzy, what do you do? Um, can I have the... Yes, here you go. Um, un unemployed. <laughs> and you, Ryan Leonard. I perform security. <laughs> Ocular pat-downs, I keep things in check around here. Thank you. Is that everyone? Did we get everyone? One of the consistent challenges we have here is people who have never been to this location coming in and asking, I've never been here before, what do I do? It's something we get at least five times a week from new groups of people who are coming in. People are used to old traditional movie theaters. They come in, there's a concession stand, you can see the poppers right behind the counter. You can see all the candy on display, but we don't do that here because we're classy. We have a bar full of alcohol. And a lot of people will come up and say, hey, where do I get my tickets? Where's the box office? We have to tell them the bartenders are the box office. They ask where our candy display is. We say, we don't have one. We're a classy joint. You come up, talk to the bartender, you order your food, and we actually deliver it to your seats. One of the local AMCs also has a, what we're gonna call counter service. You go in, you order hot food, you can get 
hot dogs and pizzas and stuff like that, and you have to wait for it in the lobby. We don't do that. We have runners, they're kind of like waiters who bring the food to your seat. Every time you make an order, you tell us your seat, and it's kind of like an address, like when you're mailing something. We pick up your hot dog. It says you're gonna be in theater seven, row A, seat seven. So the runner knows where to go. They go and they find your seat. They bend down on one knee and they deliver it to you.